All right, in this lesson we're going to be talking about absolute value equations and inequalities. So before we start um, solving, let's kind of review what absolute value actually means. Now this symbol where we have bars on either side of something, so say for instance if I used a number, what if I said the absolute value of 2? Well, most of us already understand that that would be a 2. And then also, if I said the absolute value of negative 2, then most of us would also say, well, that's a 2. Most of us understand that absolute value is just the positive of that number, but we have to see why. Um, a positive 2 here is 2 units away from 0, and a negative 2 here is 2 units away from 0. That's what absolute value means. Absolute value literally means how far from 0 is some number. That's why if we were to have what is the absolute value of negative 15, what you're literally saying is how far from 0 is negative 15, and that would be 15 units away. Okay. Once we have that idea kind of in place, let's start talking about solving equations and how we need to do that. First of all, our example says solve the absolute value of, er, of some number, some x, equals 10. Well, what they are literally asking for is, we're saying, okay, if we have a number line, we want to know what number is 10 units away from 0 and that number would have to be a 10, right? But also on the other side we could have a number that would be 10 units away from 0 also and that would be over here at a negative 10. So whatever is inside this absolute value we could look at it as the positive and then once we take the absolute value it would be positive or if we had a negative number inside here, once we took the absolute value, then it would be positive also. So it's like we have two different scenarios here. Well, if we use that concept, then we can go ahead and set this up as two separate equations and solve. We know what our answers are supposed to be, so let's see if this will give it to us. Remember, whatever's inside here could be positive or as is and that number would equal 10. Or we could also have the opposite of that x, whatever's inside here, and that should turn out to be 10 also once we take that absolute value. So let's see if we can um, finish these out. This x equals 10 is done. There's nothing else we can do to that. But negative x equals 10 we really need x alone. So if we divide both sides by negative 1, then we would get x equals negative 10. Now this is exactly what we thought it should be just by kind of um, trying to reason this out. So our solution is the set of numbers that are negative 10 and also 10. So we write that in braces to show that that is a set of answers. Now in this next problem, we have uh, an absolute value that is more involved. So we're going to use the exact same procedure though. If we took what was inside here as is, that would be equal to 8. Or we could also take the opposite of that negative 3x plus 5, and that should equal 8 also. So now we have little mini equations to solve. If I add 5 to both sides, we get negative, or subtract rather, we get negative 3x equals of 8 minus 5 would be 3, and then dividing both sides by negative 3, we get x equals negative 1. Over here, we have to distribute out our negative first, so we would have 3x minus 5 equals 8. Adding 5 to both sides, we get 3x equals 13 and then dividing both sides by 3, we would get 13 thirds. So our answer would be negative 1 comma oh, 13 over 3. Both of those answers are